26 is taking place in Glasgow from Monday. It's the 26th conference of the parties who are working together to tackle climate change. About 20,000 people are going to descend on the city uh, over the next fortnight as governments and organisations meet to discuss and encourage a worldwide effort to limit global warming. It is, of course, therefore a huge moment for the UK and for the uh, government, Boris Johnson's uh, government. Paul Johnston is the UK ambassador to Ireland and he joins me. Paul, it's always good to talk to you and we appreciate your time. Uh, how, how big a deal is this, the hosting of COP26? Thanks very much, Kieran. Great to be with you again. It's a big deal. It's a big deal, as you say, for the British government, but I think it's a big deal for every government on the planet. Uh, we want to keep it alive, the target of keeping temperature rises, global temperature rises, to within one and a half degrees of pre-industrial level. The latest international scientific report suggests we're potentially headed for a 27 degree increase, which would have catastrophic consequences for the planet. So this is really a massive, the massive global issue. And we see the conference over the next two weeks in Glasgow as a critical moment for countries around the world to come together and really do a, a big follow-up on what happened at the climate summit, I think five, six years back in Paris, where everyone signed up to this goal. It's now time to turn that ambition into delivery and for nations to really knuckle down and demonstrate that they're ready to get to net zero, taking carbon out of their economy by 2050, because otherwise we're not going to have the chance of keeping 1.5 alive and the planet is going to be heading in entirely the wrong direction. And, and I suppose if, if you're going to discuss where we go from here for the next five years, you've got to look back and carry out something of an audit on the, on the last five years and progress since Paris. And how would you assess that progress? So I think... In the last couple of years, we've gone from a situation where only 30% of global GDP uh, was, uh, was represented by countries who'd set a net zero target. It's now up to 80%. So that's been an important sort of transition. Countries have woken up to the fact that actually we've got to set pathways, in the UK's case and in Ireland's case, legally binding pathways to get down to net zero by 2050. But there's a huge amount of work to be done and, uh, you know, Glasgow is a really important moment to make sure that we have the maximum possible commitment. And it's something that can be done. I mean, the UK over the last 30 years has managed to grow our economy by 75%, but we've reduced our greenhouse gas emissions by 44%. And I think technology is a massive part of this. Uh, and if you think of what technology has done in the last 18 months in terms of response to the COVID pandemic, we've got to take the same approach and have confidence that a mixture of technology, hard work, changes of behaviour, which will be painful mm. in some areas, will enable countries, whether they're developing countries or uh, developed countries, to make those changes. That means that we can we can jointly protect the planet so that we have something to hand on to future generations. So there's a big there's a big challenge in in Glasgow. We we need to mobilise international finance. We need to mobilise big changes um, in decarbonising our economy. Um, getting to zero emission vehicles, deforestation, halting and reversing that. But there's a real ambition and appetite to, to make this a decisive moment. Uh, do you think that enough attention is given to the role of technology? Or is the narrative dominated too often by the sacrifices we need to make? I think it's a really good point. And we had a, a workshop this week jointly with our Irish colleagues looking at agricultural innovation and how to get to sustainable agriculture and clearly you know it's a big and important sector in Ireland even more so than it is in the UK and the transition will be potentially challenging but I was talking to an entrepreneur in the tech sector who basically said uh, we should be more focused on what technology can do because there's been massive strides in the last few years there will be massive further strides in the next 10 years so our view is very much of a sort of tech-led Transition and also a transition that needs to be both a private sector and a public sector partnership. So we've announced that we will commit £26 billion to our net zero uh, pathway. Um, but we're also hoping to mobilise at least three times as much in private sector investment. And I think if the, you know, the private sector sees that government is putting money where its mouth is and is also committing in law, We've committed in law to reduce our emissions by almost 70% by 2030 on the pathway to 2050. I think that will mobilise investment. And I think also you see consumers voting with their feet. People want sustainable, environmentally friendly solutions. 
and therefore I think there's a real opportunity for people to to grasp the opportunity of technology, yeah. which recognizing where the marketplace is going in terms of people's preference. And, and if, if we need to, to to acknowledge more the role of technology, do we also need to be a bit more honest about the impact that some of those sacrifices will have on us? Because you know. Uh, Environmental lobbyists always talk about, you know, opportunity and adversity. And, and understandably, if you're trying to sell a message and put a positive spin on it. But when you look at the facts and figures here, we're like we, we essentially shut down our entire economy for large parts of last year. And, and we reduced carbon emissions by about three and a half percent. And we now aim to reduce carbon emissions every year by almost five percent for the next five years. And then over eight percent for the five years after that. It's hard to imagine how we do that without some people suffering significant pain. I think the flip side is that if we collectively don't take this action, the whole world's going to be suffering significant pain. We've seen terrible climate events over the last few years. As everyone knows, the last you know few years have been amongst the hottest years recorded on the planet. So I really don't think there's any there's any alternative. There will be difficult transitions for well, a sector. There is, there is those, I'd like to cut across you, but there is, there is an alternative, and it's maybe unpalatable to to someone like yourself who subscribes to the kind of the John Donne, we are all of mankind, you know, ask not for whom the bell tolls and all of that. There, there, there will be people who think, or not, they, they, it's not a conscious decision, but because they don't see the world burning around them, they hear it, but hear messages of it, but they don't see it on a day-to-day -day basis, they might not want to take that pain, no matter how much you tell them that people around the world are suffering because of it. I think it's a great point, and it's one of the challenges, you know, frankly, for, for our leaders, but also for our big companies and for lots of, of advocates that, um, you know, I think people change their behaviour almost overnight in relation to the pandemic, because they could see it was a very real physical immediate threat. I think to a lot of people, maybe the, 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 the global climate change threat is something that seems further away. And I suppose when you talk about 2050, people think, oh, that's almost 30 years away. We've got a long time. But that's why we specifically said we're going to try and take 70% reduction in our emissions by 2030 to show that it's something that needs to be done You starting now. Indeed, we should have started, you know, years ago. So I think it's, there are no easy answers here, but I think it's a real effort to have public persuasion where it's not just for governments, it's for people who have influence across the board to try and get across to to skeptics that this is not this is not an agenda for you know our children uh, or for 10 or 20 years hence. This is something where we're already behind the clock, dangerously so, and we all need to we all need to speed up and change our behaviour. And, and, and Paul, you, you'll understand as a diplomat the, 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 the kind of the, the machinations behind the scenes better than most of us. Uh, to what extent have negotiations already taken place that this is about kind of putting a bow on things? Or, or you know, how much actually of thrashing out a, a, of the detail happens in Glasgow and will happen in Glasgow? So it's an interesting, it's an interesting question. I've worked on UN summits in the past, the big UN summits in 2005, and the ambition then was to basically have everything tied up and presented as, uh, with a bow on it when the leaders arrived for the meeting in New York. Glasgow is a bit different. So there will be, you'll see across the two weeks of the Glasgow conference, specific days dedicated to things like energy, transports, forests, land use, nature, biodiversity. And what we're doing on all of those days is partly consciousness raising, but also uh, getting governments to, to make commitments. So you'll see some negotiated declarations coming out but obviously across the whole of the two weeks, there will be this ongoing negotiation, partly about something that sounds quite technical, but it's actually quite important, which is the rule book to underpin how to deliver the commitments that were made in Paris. And then obviously we will be using the pressure of everyone being there in Glasgow to get countries to really be making meaningful, you know, ideally legally mm -hmm. binding commitments. So it's going to be a mixture of some things that are prepared in advance, but some things that will only be agreed you know, once the leaders are there, and we're hoping to use the presence of, I think it's now over 130 world leaders in Glasgow to, to really, you know, galvanise people into, into action. So I think we'll see some, some big, declaration, big declarations and hopefully some sort of big news coming out of COP26. And it, it, how big a deal is this possibly for Boris Johnson and his government to be seen to, to lead in the world stage? So it's something that we bid to lead in partnership with Italy um, a couple of years ago. It's relevant that Britain is the, the presidency of the G7, the group of big industrialised countries, and Italy is the presidency of the G20, which is the even broader grouping that was created during the, 
the financial crisis about 10 or 12 years ago, and the leaders of the G20 are meeting in Rome this weekend in the run-up to the COP. Um, so it's... I just sorry, I, was going to, I have to cut across the, 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 an issue there with cross lines uh, or, or something there. Um, uh, listen, that is all happening uh, as, as Paul Johnson uh, says. Paul Johnson, the UK ambassador uh, to Ireland. Oh, Paul, you're back there. Apologies. Um, uh, someone was trying to call me there to let me know that dinner was ready or something a little bit later when I got home. Um, we'll, we'll, that's what we'll put it down to. You, you were making the point that, yeah, th- 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 this is it's kind of an apt timing for yourselves and, and, and Italy. Yeah, because we're, we're chairing the G7, which is one group of sort of big economic actors, and they're chairing the G20, and we've both been using our presidencies of these groupings to sort of you know, galvanise people and build momentum. So it's a big deal for us, but it's really something that we think we're doing that doesn't sound too cheesy, you know, on behalf of the whole planet, because it's it's really important that people come together, strong support from the, the, the UN, the EU, and others. Um, so it's it's not really about... Uh, Britain on its own. It's about Britain trying to work with countries across the world to deliver the the, the change that we need to see in, in order to protect our planet. Paul Johnson, UK Ambassador to Ireland. Paul, a pleasure as always, and, and we'll talk to you again soon.